All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Jimmy. Welcome aboard to today's video. As you can tell clearly by the title, my truck has gotten a lot of work done in these past uh, two weeks, I would say. And uh, I filmed a bunch of videos for you guys, so this video hopefully is one that you'll enjoy and you can learn a lot from. And uh, even if you don't learn too much, just have a, a good time watching it because it's pretty entertaining. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be commentating as we go along with the videos um, and give sort of my second opinion to what's going on. So since this video is already pretty long to begin with, I'll start the video with the uh, clips I took along the way and I will commentate here along the way as well so that um, you can kind of get my second opinion on things. So here we go. Let's get into the video. Welcome back, you guys. My name is Jimmy and you're watching the King Shock and Customs channel and today I have a, a pretty long video, longer video than usual, and um, we're basically going to be taking the motor out of my truck and doing all that, like the whole nine yards, resealing everything, because it's 18 years now and it's probably never ever been touched and it's starting to get to the point where it's leaking and uh, it just needs the maintenance to be done. So it's time to do that and while I'm at it, if you've been watching my last videos, my caliper just went out, so we're going to be doing brakes. and. In fact, we're going to be doing the whole coil swap, front end suspension, uh, and get rid of those leaf springs while we're at the job. So uh, I'm going to bring the truck. This will be the last start right here before we're all done with it. And uh, we're going to start taking it apart today. So I know this video might be a little bit out of the blue because nobody was really expecting this. But uh, I've been got, getting all the parts lately these past few weeks, and I'm ready to rock and roll. So here we go. <laughs> So let me show you on the odometer here. We're reading just under 300,000, 297.5. So it's time for this truck to be done. It's probably way overdue on everything, uh, especially under the hood. Uh, I know my oil pan's getting rotted out and it doesn't leak, but it's just gonna poke a pinhole through there eventually. and. Like you've seen the caliper, it's just time to be doing this so that I don't have to do it down the road. I just want it to be done right uh, one time and uh, kind of get everything done. And like I said, we're going to separate this frame. And if you look over here, I happen to have an 05 coil axle uh, with the coil springs. And we're just going to slap this right in there. I'm in the process of rebuilding it all right now. Got most of it taken apart. Uh, in fact, I just did the ball joints yesterday. I got a small clip here. I'll show you that. And as you can see, I did a little bit of work here on the ball joints. I got all the new ones pressed in here. And I cleaned this up too. So, And basically, I'm going to take this and slide it in there, rebuild it. This is all going to be perfectly brand new by the time I'm done with it. And uh, look a little better than what it looks right now. But uh, that's what we're going to be doing with that. So might as well, while I'm taking the motor out, do the coil spring because I've always wanted that in the truck and then uh, here I'll pop the hood show you what it's under there all right so we'll look under the hood here and uh, there's nothing visually wrong and don't get me wrong this truck runs awesome uh, just I want to take care of any leaks in the future that may be happening because I know these seven threes like to leak we've got a bunch of them here we've probably done at least 15 of them and resealed every part of it so uh, this one's not gonna be my first one but I just figured I'd get this on film because uh, this is probably a pretty interesting project for most of you guys to see. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to start here. I'm going to drain all the fluids out, disconnect the batteries, and get myself going so I can jump ahead and get the day started. So here we go. I'll take clips along the way. All right, so at this point in the video, I'm just about to begin the whole entire motor pull on the project. And um, obviously, like I said, I'm trying to replace parts that will be leaking, uh, specifically while the motor's out. So that includes like the oil pan, oil core, seals, things that are easy to do while the motor's out as opposed to doing it in. I tried to do it this way so that if something goes to leaking, let's just say on the top of the motor, fuel line, whatever it is, I can do it later on because it's easily accessible from the top of the motor. 
and not obviously the oil pan is not one of those objects where you can just kind of do it with the motor in the truck. The whole motor's kind of got to come out to make it the easiest, and um, that's what I'm trying to do. The main goal is to just make things easier for me down the road, so I never have to touch it again, never have to pull the motor, etc. So um, that's where I'm at in the video. So now I'm going to start kind of taking it apart and working on it and showing you clips. All right, I got a little bit of progress done. Took a lot of the front stuff out that's in the way and now I can get my hands more on the motor here and all my parts are over here for what I've taken off so I'm just gonna keep chopping away at this little by little taking pieces off and uh, should have this motor out by the end of today hopefully all right I've made more progress I just got the turbo off which if anyone has worked on a 7.3 you know that's a pain in the butt and I still gotta do some fuel lines a couple other little miscellaneous things, but then I'm ready to kind of rock and roll with the torque converter, get that out, and then uh, we should be on our way here. So, more to come. And now you'll realize that throughout this whole video, the weather was not my friend cooperating in this whole project. It was, it was absolute disastrous. I had to quit at certain points because of the rain. I was working outside the entire time, and uh, the snow in New Jersey just likes the snow and rain at random times and uh, scattered throughout the day. So uh, that just was not my luck. So after the first day, I didn't really get too much done. I got almost the motor pulled, but um, it wasn't as much as I hoped to get, but the weather just unfortunately did not hold up. Okay guys, welcome back to day two. And now the motor is out, as you can see. I spent a couple hours this morning getting it out. And uh, I put it over here on the cart and if you notice, if you are uh, been watching the channel for a while, you notice that this is the same cart that I used to put the Cummins on when I had that 12 valve. And uh, it fits the 7.3 nicely too, so I'm using it for that. And there's my motor right there, of course. And now I can kind of start doing this frame swap thing with the coil spring. And uh, we're going to get going on that. But I'm going to call it a day today. I took a couple hours in the morning. And uh, it's New Year's Eve, so I got a couple plans for tonight or whatever. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow for this again. All right, I got the motor all prepped to be pressure washed here. I have this stuff, it's called LA's Totally Awesome Degreaser. You can get it at the dollar store. And this stuff is amazing. It, it takes everything literally right off. And so I'll just spray it on here and get all this grease and gunk off here. And then uh, I can start doing some new parts on here, reselling stuff and uh, getting ready. So here we go. All right, so it's been about three minutes since I sprayed this stuff on here and it's already starting to take off some of the grease here without me even touching it. This stuff here is truly the best stuff I've ever used on a motor to get grease off. It will take pretty much all your grease off, spotless down to the metal and I've tried industrial degreasers from Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, and none of them can beat this. I, this is a dollar store brand that you can get there, but this is by far the best stuff and absolutely for the price you can't beat it. I can't find anything better than this out there. So uh, big hats off to LA's Totally Awesome Degreaser. It's the best stuff on the market in my opinion. I wouldn't use anything else. And the uh, greatest thing is that it's only a dollar. All right. Just got this power washed up today now, since my power washer was giving me troubles last night. And uh, this thing came out great. All the grease is pretty much off of it. That stuff worked just how it should have. So very good, satisfied with that. And while I was at it, I did the frame over here just so I'm not getting too much grease on my hands when I'm taking this, this front frame section out. And uh, I got something in the garage too, I'll show you that. Would you look at that? That looks amazing. That's the uh, 415 on there. And uh, it looks great. The color is so good and it looks like brand new now. So uh, that's pretty, pretty good. I'm satisfied with it. And uh, it came in this little can that I bought on Amazon. Here's my hand for reference. It's about the size of just my knuckles there and i thought i was gonna have to use a lot that i was gonna run out but i only used like a pinch of it it, it a little bit of it goes a very very long way and uh 
I, this thing's still almost full, so I'm gonna have plenty more to do other little parts, and then I have a big cord of it to uh, do the frame with, so just thought I'd show you guys this. Okay, so after the next day, I am doing all of my stuff. I'm painting miscellaneous parts, power washing, doing all of this stuff. I start to begin to do the frame, and I realize that it is impossible to get these rivets out and jack up the cap just a hair. It's impossible to get the frame out with that little bit of room. So I end up taking the entire cap off which was not in my plan or else I would have just done that right to begin with. So I kind of wasted a day pulling the motor and doing all that stuff rather than just pulling the cab up and leaving the motor there and easily doing it. So it took me a little bit extra time there because I wasn't originally intending to take the cab off just because I thought it would be easier. But uh, keep watching because I'll explain more about that. Okay guys, so yeah, quite not what you'd expect for the whole cab to be off and uh, this truck to be rolling frame and bed, but uh, last night I was trying to cut these off, rivets off to get the frame out and I realized that the space is just not, not friendly in there, so it would have been really, really tough to get that off with the cab on, so then I was like... Figure, trying to figure out a way how to get the cab off because I don't really have the tools to do that. But uh, what I did was I just took that engine hoist and I stuck it right in the door here and I lifted it up just right from the middle. And I took my skid steer and got a strap on the front and picked that up. So it was kind of sketchy, but uh, it did work. So I got it off. But that's one of the reasons why I didn't just pull the cab to begin with because. Uh, the tools that I have are not adequate to do it, and uh, they're not the best way, so I usually don't like pulling cabs like this, but I had to because we're this far in and I need to get these rivets off, and uh, I just needed the room to be able to work with it. So, And also, real quick, I thought I'd show you the frame after I did the Pour 15 before we throw it in the truck here, but it, it looks amazing. It looks like it's a brand new thing compared to what it was. It stuff really really works so uh i'm extremely satisfied with that i got a couple spots to touch up yet but uh this weather has been holding me up so badly it's been raining like every other day so it's just been really hard to get any type of work done with a full day and uh especially with something paints like this it rain will ruin it so that's why this thing's been taking a little bit but now that hopefully it's raining today but not horrible so hopefully i can get a big chunk done and finally, before I get started today, I thought I'd show you this. These are some various parts of the motor that I'm painting while I have it out. And uh, luckily, I can use the garage space here so that they won't get rained on. Um, but the uh, garage door is not functioning right now, or else I have the whole truck in here. But uh, this little stuff right here came out great. I think it's going to look good. Hopefully it holds up when we reassemble without getting scratched or anything. But We'll see, I thought it'd be just worthwhile to paint it while it's out. So, uh, just wanted to show you that. And now I'll get my day started. We'll see how much work I can get done today. Hopefully a big chunk of it. All right, and now as I've already mentioned, I was not expecting this project to be nearly as hard as it was. It took me so much longer than I anticipated. And that's mainly because of these rivets and separating the frame was not as easy as I thought. So I'm going to uh, thoroughly explain how I did it and uh, what was kind of holding me up this whole time and what made it take really, really long as opposed to a thing that I thought would take four or five days, but it ended up taking me two weeks to do it. So um, keep watching more and I'll explain it, how I did the rivets and everything about that. All right, guys. So as you can see here, I got this front piece of the frame out. And uh, yesterday I was working on these rivets pretty much like the entire afternoon and 
Uh, they were really tough to get out. I want to mention you cannot use a torch on these rivets. It will take the integrity out of the frame, significantly weaken it, um, possibly give you problems aligning it, etc. So you cannot use it. Restrain yourself from using it. I was so, so tempted to use it because I was so mad at those rivets. They would not come out. But uh, with a little bit of a technique that I developed along the way, I was able to start getting them um, a couple minutes each. So uh, it took me a while to kind of figure that out. But no torches. That's very, very, very important. And uh, this is the frame we're dealing with, so it's got to be done correctly. So I had to beat them out cold with a center punch and a hammer. And actually it was a sledgehammer. What I would do was I would drill a hole about halfway through the rivet and then um, take my center punch and stick it in there so it could stay without me having to hold it. And then I would take my sledgehammer and whack it literally as hard as I could. And then even that was still sometimes not enough to get it out. So those were definitely a pain in the butt to get them off, but I did get them off. And I uh, used a grinder a little bit to cut the heads off, but uh, definitely not as easy as I expected. And there's a good thing that I took the cab off because I would have never been able to get these off. Uh, otherwise because there's just not enough room and I didn't have enough force to even get them off so and this is what I mean when I am doing the rivets here I uh, cut the head off I grind it down flush and I drill with a pilot drill bit and then I stick a bigger drill bit in so I can get my punch over here to fit into the hole once I drill that bigger hole here and then I Put this in there, let it rest by itself, and then I get my sledgehammer and I whack it as hard as I can, and then uh, the rivet will come out. So that's how you do those two, and then the rest of them kind of. And then these bottom ones, uh, once I get the top ones out, I just use a long uh, drill bit to get these ones started, and then I punch them out. So uh, that works really well for me. It takes about a couple hours to do it. It's a it's kind of a lot of work, but uh, it's definitely the easiest way I, I can think of. That's that, and now today we're going to be putting this beauty back in, uh, this new piece. Slide it right back in here, and then I'm going to use grade 8 bolts, so let's get going on the day. Alright, so now I got the, uh, the frame back together in one whole piece, and I'll explain a little more here of what I did. It just kind of slides in once you get those two pieces off and put the new piece in, and then... Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, we got the front section of the frame in with the coil spring axle. And uh, I just want to point out a couple things here that are important for people to know. People, I know people are going to be like, bro, why did you take like the whole cab off and everything and do the whole nine yards to swap this axle when you could have just unbolted the axle itself and put the buckets on and the springs and then the axle underneath your existing frame and uh, to answer that question is, there's a difference in the frame here. It's well supported here. The cross member's a little bit beefier. And um, because the axle, when Ford did uh, suspension testing when they first made this frame, uh, the old frame just couldn't stand it. It was not strong enough to support these coil spring axles. So I figured I would just do it this way, go with the proper frame from Ford, instead of trying to get something to weld in here, and deal with all that because I don't want this thing to crack or break so I OEM that's the way I went and uh, basically uh, that's that's my reasoning behind that also another point is people are gonna say why don't you just cut these ones off there's less rivets over here than here yeah but if you do that then you're not gonna get it to line up as well as if you were to have a bunch of points to bolt to because I would rather keep these uh, rivets in here to keep the frame as straight as possible and then work with these nine or however many there are here to get the frame straight rather than relying on four or five over here. So that's why I took the long route and did it this way because now the frame's gonna be as straight as I possibly can get it until I at least uh, get it checked at the alignment shop and uh, get this seam welded. But um, this is the right way to do it. Uh, if you go to Power Stroke Help, this is the way he does it for the excursions. So uh, this is what's necessary to get it done correctly and safely, um, unless you figure out some way to weld that in. But uh, this is something crucial. I'm not going to play any games here with the frame not being straight or anything. I want it to be straight as an arrow and uh, basically 
OEM because that's what it is. It is OEM. So, so an easier way to put it is why that piece is there is because the leaf spring comes down like this and it has two points of contact here and here. But uh, the coil spring right here, all of the force is concentrated right here entirely on this section of the frame right by the cross member. So rather than having two points of contact, it's got all the weight sitting right here. So that's why these are welded here near the cross member because all the weights being taken by that cross member, which also has to hold the motor. So that's exactly why you need support here. And I know that people are just saying like, oh, you could just bolt the stuff up and they've done it and uh, they weld that in or whatever. And that's fine, but I, I want more assurance than just uh, doing it that way because there's there's a reason they put this weld support here There's a reason they changed this when they did it because they did those suspension tests and uh, Ford was pretty smart if if something was uh, Easily kept the same they usually tried to keep it the same I mean you look at the cab over there the cab lasted what like 16 years before they changed it and uh, most of these things uh, That they do over the years. They try to keep them the same Unless it needs to be redesigned, because that costs money. And um, they wouldn't have redesigned this if it didn't need to be done. So uh, there's a reason that they did it. All right, and now this part's very important to me too. Sorry I explained it with three different clips with the frame, but this is a truly important part to me. I am working on the frame here of an 8,000 pound truck. And if it's not done right, you got 8,000 pounds going down the road, and then the frame cracks or something happens along the way, not only is my safety at risk here, other people around me, their safety is at risk. I can't be doing that and uh, dealing with that. So I needed to do it the right way. That makes me so much more sure. It makes me sleep better at night. And um, I'm not saying that the other way is not a correct or valid way to do it. It's just I don't like taking risks because I've learned along the way with de dealing with plenty and plenty of trucks that shortcuts, risks, all of this, it adds up. It does not work out for me. I've had too many times where I've tried to cut a corner or do something not the right way and it just does not work. It just uh, put the extra little time in and then you get the assurance you never have to worry about it and uh, you can be stress free um, just like kind of like I am now because I know that this truck is, is done right and uh, there's nothing really to go wrong. So that's my uh, emphasis on that. I just wanted to make that very, very clear. And um, obviously this is my opinion, but it's just, in, in my opinion, I just do it the right way and spend a little bit of extra time because it's only labor, it doesn't cost me any money, and uh, just do it. All right, I got the motor hanging from a heavy duty strap here. And uh, I'm working on the oil pan currently and this rear main seal, which is not common in a 7.3, but I'm doing it anyway while it's out. I'll just get it done with the new new seal so I never ever have to touch it again and then uh, you can see what I mean by this oil pan being rotted this thing ready to kick the bucket basically so uh, it's time for the new one and uh, this is just maintenance that needs to be done eventually so I don't get stuck with a leaky oil pan down the road or something like that because we got it all apart as you see so why not do it and now is where I start showing you a little bit of the motor that I'm taking apart. Um, doing oil pan, I only showed you that really, but did the oil pan, did the oil core seals, did the little plugs on the back of the cylinder head, uh, rear main seal, which is not common at all on a 7.3, and most people would never replace it. I used to never replace it, but just one more thing that is an extra 30 bucks for a seal, just why not do it while it's out? Never have to worry about it again. So um, that's what I did. Did it out while it was out, and uh, now I don't really have to worry about it. I left some of the things on the top go, so that if I have to do them later, I can easily get to them. And uh, they have a little bit of life left, so i uh, try to try to give credit there where it's due. And um, that's pretty much it. Did a couple of other things, high pressure oil pump seal. Oh, and I did the turbo pedestal seal, so those are important too while it's out. It's easy to do. Um, there are little two O-rings on the pedestal, two O-rings that go to the turbo, and... Um, Easy, just do it while it's out. They don't cost much at all, so uh, might as well take care of them. All right, so we're at the start of a new day. Got the motor in late last night after putting a lot of stuff on it, cleaning it up, whatnot, resealing, and uh, 
got it bolted up to the transmission just got to tighten it down and um, we'll be rolling today hopefully get the cab set on later today if not button it up tomorrow or something but uh, we'll see how the weather goes it's supposed to snow a little bit today but um, you can see how this purple looks it looks pretty good with the oil pan and the valve covers I think once the cab goes on and the intercooler pipes go in it should look popping so that's exactly what I wanted it to look like so moving along quite well all right guys next day late last night got the cab set back on and uh, this thing's almost there we're almost back together so uh, today just finish up the front here get a little thing a couple things on and button it all up should have it started by the end of today and uh, good to go here so this is uh, getting towards the wrap-up of it but uh, work slowly today and get it done get it done right and uh, we should be rolling with it so here we go you see it's just like flash weather like this it just randomly starts sleeting out here this is what I'm talking about here in Jersey and now we are at the point where we're ready to start it right, oh, here we go It's a starter, it's not engaging. Sounds good. And unfortunately this first time I went to start it, I put the starter on backwards, it's a two bolt starter, so um, I put it in the wrong holes and it was not engaging. So uh, that was a little bit of a surprise the first time I went to crank it, kind of felt stupid after that, but. Uh... All right, let's try that again with the starter orientated in the right way and uh, see if she fires up. I'm sure she's gonna take a little bit of crank in here. successful at getting the engine running once again and let's not forget that the truck was all the way in half a few days prior and now we have the motor back and the cab on and it's running so that's a very good sign out over the next few days after this I was only able to get a couple of things buttoned up like um, drive shaft and other little things while I was working on brake lines and things of that nature once we got that done I realized that I punctured the radiator after I put it in. So um, I don't really know how I did it, but I somehow it was punctured and it was leaking like crazy. So I had to order a new radiator and that took me three or four days to wait for it. So I really couldn't do anything with the truck at that point. All right guys, on this lovely 15 degree day, I got uh, the radiator in here this morning, crawled under here and uh, did it. So, uh, now that's all that's really left is to put this hood on, button up a couple little things, but for the most part, this thing starts, runs, drives, everything's done. Uh, basically just a hood and a couple little interior pieces. Um, but man, is it cold out here. It feels like 10 degrees, I think they're saying on the weather, but uh, makes me not want to keep going today and just call it a day, but I got to get some stuff done to it. But uh, I'm going to leave the seats for now out because I'm planning on doing a video for this King Ranch wiring since I kind of left that off in the summer and I didn't really show what I did and how to do it. So I'm going to do that within a few days I think. So I'm going to be driving around with just the driver's seat in it for a couple days. But then other than that, I mean this thing is done for pretty much good. Nothing else really needs to be done. So I'm going to put the hood on, take a couple clips and then uh, that'll basically be it.
as you can see on there, I got a bunch of idiot lights on, but uh, just for uh, like my parking brake, cut the cable to get the cab off because I couldn't even get it off, so that's got to be replaced at some point. And uh, the ABS wires just got to be hooked back up, so that'll take care of that one. And uh, obviously, check engine light. I broke one of the sensors under there, um, but it's one of the ones that doesn't really matter for now, so gotta replace that. Um, that's pretty much it other usual stuff but uh, that's it for the interior like I said I'll do the King Ranch seat video within the week or whatever whenever I get to it and then uh, that's basically it glad that the truck came out all right and I didn't destroy the cab or anything but uh, all this work for that <laughs> that coil spring under there basically just sealing up the motor and stuff making sure that it's dependable when I need it to be and uh, now I don't really have to worry about it, and it'll ride 10 times better. I already took it for a drive, and man, it's good. It's uh, it's like gliding down the road, unlike those leaf springs, but uh, yeah. All right, so if you made it at this point in the video, I thank you very, very much for watching, making it to this point. Uh, this project was amazing. It was something that um, I would say is one of the biggest goals I've accomplished with the truck. Um, or I think any truck, I mean, I, I've pulled motors before, I've done all that, but I've never separated a frame or torn down a truck to become half of what it is and then put it back together. I mean, I part out trucks and I have parted out trucks, so um, I've stripped trucks all the way down to a bare frame and all that, but putting it back together is, is more than half the battle because everything has to go back in the right spot without damaging it and... Um, it's, it's a little tricky, but it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this project. And uh, I would probably do it again now that I know more of the technique. But after thinking about all the weather I dealt with and everything, I definitely want to do it inside and um, do it in a, in a better environment, um, in the garage, hopefully. But uh, that was the only limitation. I didn't have the garage this whole time because it, it's still getting put up in the door, waiting on parts, etc. So... Um, that was a really major downfall to the project, made it take a lot longer than it should have. But uh, other than that, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And uh, not to mention that the, the truck rides amazing. Like I went over bumps and everything it is nothing compared to what it used to be. It rides so fantastic. Um, I mean, I notice it and I'm not, I'm not a huge stickler for ride quality, but I do notice how much better it glides over the, over the potholes and the bumps in the road and everything. So uh, I've driven it maybe like 25 miles so far. I haven't really taken it that much because I haven't needed it. And so now my truck is up to the 2008 to 2010 standard at least. So um, it's got everything that a 6.4 would basically have uh, with the coil spring, suspension, the interior, the exterior, everything basically. I mean, if you want to be really, really picky, the only thing is, is the rear leafs. And uh, the rear axle is different, it's not the same one, but uh, in the future I hope to upgrade to the 05 one to get the track with the same and the bigger brakes and everything like that. So uh, that'll happen sometime in the future whenever I get an axle or a parts truck or something of that nature. But uh, for now I'm satisfied, I'm going to call the job complete and say that this swap is done. Definitely, once again, making it to this point in the video. I really, really appreciate it. I know it was a long one, but hopefully you learned a thing or two, and it was very enjoyable to watch. And um, you could see what something like this grade looks like on a truck when you strip it down all the way and put it back together. And then one last thing I want to address is uh, people keep telling me that after I did this swap, um, why not just buy a 2008, 2010, all this, all that, or six, seven, just upgrade to a six, seven, do that. They're going for 20 grand, whatever. And, uh, my answer to that question, I want to answer it in a full video cause I have a way better answer than just what I'll give you right now, but I have a lot of reasons, but, um, to answer that question is if with the price is that I'm not really paying an expensive price on this truck. I bought the axle, the new axle, the front one. For 400 bucks and I sold my old one for 150 and the new one came with two tires I sold those for 100 bucks so I really got the new coil spring for 150 bucks and you can't really beat that I mean to upgrade to something nicer and have to do brakes anyway and all my truck needed ball joints anyway so I'm only paying an extra 150 bucks 
or something that's way nicer. So that's not adding up to the thousands and thousands of dollars that everyone thinks I'm dropping down on this truck. Because I'm playing it smart, I'm buying parts cheap, getting them off parts trucks, and then I'm reselling what I can and uh, kind of doing it the right way without spending a boatload of money on this truck. So it's definitely doable, but that's for a later video. I'll answer all those questions and give a full in-depth uh, answer to that. So again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, definitely consider subscribing if you want to see things like this. I do crazy, crazy things all the time, uh, ripping things apart, fixing them, looking at them. And uh, I, I got a lot of stuff to show you guys because I, I see crazy things out there and uh, have access to a lot of trucks and uh, tractors, whatever, three-wheelers, quads, things like that. So if you definitely like that, then uh, consider subscribing, throw the channel, subscribe. That's pretty much going to wrap up the video. Thank you. Thank you once again so much. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.